Hello again students, this is Dr. Jackman here. I hope you have been enjoying the videos of the past couple of weeks. Now we are on to the third video and this is week three. And the topic this week is moral development and we'll be examining, examining Kohlberg's theory of moral development. But before we do so, we'll also examine Piaget's theory of moral development. As you can see from the pictures on the first slide, I just want you to keep calm and be moral and we'll be looking at the moral development of children right on to youth and adults so let's get started okay when we talk about moral development we are saying that morality is what distinguishes man from animals animals may do right and wrong but they don't have a moral conscience so to speak man has a moral conscience or man should have a moral conscience but again depending on our environment and how we are brought up will determine the kinds of ethics that we um, subscribe to and the way we conduct our, our lives but generally speaking we, we would say that morality is having that sense of right and wrong as we see in the second picture here on the screen and sometimes you can even think of it of as having a good and a bad angel as Homer Simpson has on either shoulder and um, that is another way of depicting um, the choices that we have that we are faced with in our consciences as we think about deciding what we want to do as a matter of fact Sigmund Freud whom you would have learned about earlier in Psych of Human Development says that we have the ego which is the the individual choice or just our mind without a neutral mind without having one side or the other and then we have the super ego which is our conscience that identifies the right way we should walk or moral virtues and values and then we have the id which just wants to do what it wants to do so the id would be like little devil there and the super ego would be like the angel saying no you should not do that do the right thing and we are in the middle having to make a choice as prospective teachers we have to also remember that teachers are moral models whether we like it or not we by the way we conduct ourselves by our attitudes and the choices we make we are moral models that children would either follow or not follow especially younger children so we set an example in one way or the other. Okay, so let's look at Piaget's theory of moral development. And in this particular case, we'll be looking at two stages. One, external or heteronymous morality. That's stage one. And also, internal or autonomous morality. Stage two. In heteronymous morality, the understanding is that children make moral choices based on the rules that are laid down by authority figures parents teachers elders big brother big sister auntie uncle grandpa grandma etc and they generally believe that those rules are inflexible and they should be rigidly adhered to these rules cannot change so when a child under the age of 10 or something seven eight does something wrong they are usually scared, they're looking for imminent justice, they're looking to be punished. So the external morality is so called because the morality is comes from the outside, comes from other figures. And as you see in this picture, this cute little girl got her mommy's bag probably after work and she has emptied all the, con the contents of the bag and probably mommy just came and is like, what are you doing? And little girl is like, oh, oh, I got caught. So, according to all the parents, parent may have dealt with her in the past. She's ex she knew or she knows that she may have done something wrong and that mommy would take over the things or help make her pack them back and say, no, you shouldn't empty mommy's contents. You shouldn't go into mommy's bag and far less empty the contents on the floor. Now, by the time they reach 10 years of age, according to Piaget, children the morality would have moved based on the experiences from just simply obeying because 
the rules and the principles are laid down by authority figures to a more internal morality. The morality of self. So morality is gener generated from within. A conscience is developed over time by knowing what is right and wrong. And individuals also recognize that there is some flexibility. The rules are not so rigid. You can, you know, um, mom might have said, don't um, leave the house or don't take the, 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 don't interfere with any of the food until she gets back or don't, don't do something or the other. And that rule, they would understand, is flexible based on circumstances. So mom might have been held up in a traffic jam and she couldn't get back to take all the, the food or there is something that is put aside for a special day and someone comes and they're hungry and you need to change the circumstances. So the rules are applied according to the situation or circumstance. Not that the rules are absolutely flexible, but there is some flexibility and conscience is involved in the choices that individuals make from 10 years of age and onward. So as far as Piaget is concerned, moral development occurs in two stages. One, where it is external, where the child is just following rules based on that others have laid down and these rules are rigid and inflexible. And then by the age of 10 with experience and understanding that things and circumstances might change how a rule might be applied, it is now depending on the individual conscience and it is now internal, move from external to internal and it is considered autonomous morality. So those are Piaget's two stages. We can now move on to Kohlberg's stages of development, Kohlberg's theory of moral development. And in Kohlberg's theory, there are three levels, as you can see, pre-conventional level, conventional level, post-conventional level. And in each level, there are two stages. The first two stages are obedience and punishment, the second stage, as can be seen, individual exchange. The third stage, interpersonal relationships. The fourth stage, authority and social order. The fifth stage, social contract. And the sixth stage, universal principles. And so we would get into each uh, a discussion of each of the different stages one by one as we go through. You can spend some time on this slide, a little longer on this slide, looking at this these definitions. And, um, but we will get into each of those as we have time. So you can pause the video if you want at this point and look at the definitions and read them through. But I will elaborate on each one as we go further. Okay, so now let's look at the first stage in Kohlberg's theory of moral reasoning. And it's important to note that his theory was developed based on Heinz dilemma and it's a situation where um, this man had his wife was grievously ill and there was a special um, drug that she needed he couldn't afford it and the person who was selling the drug was selling it very expensive and he broke into the person's pharmacy and got the drug and he saved his wife's life and the question Colby would ask his participants do you think the man was right or wrong should he be punished should he be praised and based on your answer, he would place you at a, a particular stage of moral development. So let's look at the stages. The first level, the pre-conventional level, and conventional means the conventions of society, what society has established. So at the pre-conventional level, we have two stages, punishment, avoidance, and obedience, and the exchange of favors. In this first um, stage, Individuals make moral decisions based on what is best for themselves. It's all about themselves. They are in the egocentric mode, as it were. And they obey rules, just like in the uh, heteronomous stage, they obey rules because they are established by powerful individuals. In the second stage, which will be the exchange of favors, individuals begin to recognize that others also have needs and uh, they may attempt to satisfy their needs of others if their own needs are satisfied. I will share with you if you promise to share with me. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. I'm sure we have heard that statement before. And right and wrong 
right or wrong is primarily described in terms of the consequences to us. So if I can do something and not be punished or get away with it, fine, that for me is right or wrong. So we have some little <laughs> illustrations here. As you can see, in the first illustration, the young girl is hiding be below the bed because she's afraid of licks. And all of us may have experienced that when we were small, where we, we seek to obey to avoid punishment. Obedience is just mainly to avoid punishment and we seek to do what is best for ourselves. And the second picture when the monkeys there, it's supposed to depict you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And you know, monkeys normally like to groom each other and they take care of each other in that sort of a way. So the exchange of favors or the second stage of, of Kohlberg's theory of moral reasoning is that individuals will make decisions to satisfy their own needs and especially and they will make decisions for others if their needs will be satisfied in return and exchange of favors okay so we can now look at level two and level two deals with conventional morality or the morality that is established by society and the first um, stage in level two is stage three, which is individuals would make moral decisions on based on what will please authority figures, and um, they also recognize they consider that innocence may be determined by one's sense. Um, someone's intentions might must be taken into consideration when we think about innocence or guilt. So that is very important for us to uh, consider that a person may like for example a young boy is, he wants to be a good boy a good girl a young lady is helping her her mom with the basket of clothes but they also at this stage say three will consider if the plate slips out of his hand it may be an accident so he should not be punished so they will consider intentions so if he broke the plate, broke the plate deliberately that's a different thing in the fourth stage, law and order, individuals see society as a whole and um, and society is what determines what is right and what is wrong and they also they perceive of rules as inflexible and it is their duty to follow these rules because these rules are laid down by society. So let's stop at this point and uh, we will continue at part two of this video which will be much shorter probably about four or five minutes.